It's great to see you. Merry Christmas. Today is Christmas Eve. I'm so excited. So tonight we're going to have a couple friends over in a little while. And, but tomorrow, I'm preparing kind of for tomorrow. Tomorrow is our family get together in the afternoon. And I'm going to make some meatballs. Now, we probably won't eat all of these. Some of these are gonna go in the freezer for later in the week or whenever when we have spaghetti and meatballs or whatever we feel like having. Sometimes we like to make meatball subs. Sometimes we just like to eat the meatballs. But this recipe is so easy. You guys are gonna be able to do this with no problem at all. And they are so delicious. You know, you can slave over the stove all day and create these meatballs, but this is such a quick and easy recipe. You can definitely do this like no problem at all. So I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and let's get started with the ingredients. Now I have 85% hamburger here and I have six pounds of it. You don't need to do six pounds. You can cut this down in two pound portions or one pound portions. Um, I kind of gauge it by two pound portions just because two pounds of beef equals one box of stuffing. So go to your pantry, grab the extra box of stuffing that you didn't use at Thanksgiving, or if you did, well, maybe you can find some somewhere real quick. And I just go ahead and I use regular stove top stuffing or whatever you have. So I have six pounds, 85% ground beef. Like I said, you can use turkey burger. Um, I've, I've done this with turkey burger a ton and I love turkey meatballs. Um, it's a little, less fat, little healthier option for you. So if you're trying to watch that, then definitely use that or chicken, what, whatever ground, ground meat that you have, okay? So six pounds goes in there. Now, like I said, you can cut this down, cut it into two pound portions if you want, or um, you can cut it in half to the three pound portion, okay? So from here, and I got my gloves on, it's a little bit easier to work with because we're gonna be using your hands today, okay? So I usually wear some gloves it's a little bit easier, all right? So I have got three boxes of stuffing now. Like I said before, I just get the regular box of stovetop stuffing and two pounds of beef is a good, kind of a good ratio with one box of stuffing, okay? So that's why I have three boxes here. So all three boxes are gonna go right in. Like I said, this is such a super, super easy recipe. All right three boxes of stuffing is in there. Okay, so then next come the eggs. Now, for every two pounds of beef and every one box of stovetop stuffing or whatever stuffing that you have, the generic brand is good or Pepperidge Farm or whatever that you have, um, I buy those in bulk or big cases at the box store, so that's why I have them on hand. You're gonna need two eggs. So two, just remember the ratio, two pounds, two eggs. Okay, so if you do less, cut it in half. If you do a pound, it's one egg. If you do three pounds, okay, so you just kind of just gauge it like that. All right, so in when in doubt, always go up an egg. Okay, if you can't split an egg in half, of course you can't split an egg in half, but you can, uh, you can definitely, one egg per pound. How's that? Does that break that down maybe a little bit easier for you? All right, so six eggs and make sure they're good size eggs, even if you wanna like go with the jumbo ones, because you really need a good binding ingredient for, and the fat in the meat helps too, so if you have a fattier meat, then you don't have to worry so much about the size of the eggs, um, because like I said, this ground beef here is 85%, so it's got some good fat in it, okay? And then you're, you're good to go there, okay? But you do need the eggs, you definitely need the eggs. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the milk now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole cooking thing. I don't gauge the milk. It depends really, A, on how big your eggs are and how fatty your meat is as to how much milk that you use. Now, if you've ever made meatballs before, you pretty much know that they can't be really dry. You don't want them dry at all. So don't be afraid to use the milk, all right? The, the bread in the stuffing is gonna absorb some of it. So I just start out with probably about a half a cup to start. Okay, so that just kind of gets everything a little wet and I just dig in with my hands and I'm just gonna incorporate the egg in with the stuffing mix and grind that right into all of the burger. And what I do is I reach way down at the bottom and I pull up the meat, okay, to kind of meet everything. Now, I already know that I'm gonna add way more milk than this, okay? So it's probably, 
It depends on how much beef that you use, but I'll probably use a good two cups of milk, maybe three. I don't know. It all depends how it feels. All right, so a lot of cooking, a lot of baking, a lot of those kinds of things, it's the feel of it. And that's why you want to use your hands because you're going to be able to feel that moisture and you're going to really be able to work in that stuffing really well. That bread is going to turn from a hard crusty bread to soft, okay, because the meat and the eggs and the milk are going to combine and soften up that bread so you don't need to worry about it at all. Now you notice that I didn't use any pepper, I didn't use any salt, I didn't use any extra flavoring. If you wanted to, you could, but you don't need to. This makes such a good flavorful meatball, you guys, that you don't need to add anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep mixing this. I added probably about another cup and a half or so, cup, cup to a cup and a half of milk. And I'm just gonna keep mixing this. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you what the next step is. So don't go away. Go wrap some presents. Well, you really can't, because I'm gonna edit this video and then so I'm going to be back in just an instant, so you can't wrap any presents yet. I guess you could wrap presents while I was talking, but hopefully you've got most of them wrapped. So we'll be right back. Hey everybody, we're back. Thanks for tuning back in. I've got the mix all mixed together. Now I've gone ahead, I've done one batch already. I've thrown them in the oven. Okay, so those are cooking. Now, I, you noticed that there was a glass casserole dish there before. That's the one that I filled. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start on this pan. Now this is just a cookie sheet, so you can use either or. Okay, you can use a cookie sheet, you can use a, uh, like sometimes I use one of those big catering pans because I usually make a ton of these when I'm making them, right? So I just give it a quick spray with some cooking spray and then that way they don't get too uh, stuck. So you could line it with some parchment paper if you wanted to. You could always do that. Um, I never think to do that part. So what we're gonna do is I've got a cookie, a regular cookie scoop here, okay? So this cookie scoop is my bigger one. I have a smaller one that I use for, you know, just some, the, the more mini cookies, but this one is my good size um, one inch baller, okay? So I use them to make um, meatballs as well, and it really works well. So all I do is I'm just gonna scoop the meat right in here, put it in my hand, give it a little bit of a, Kind of a form a little bit with my left hand and then these are going to go right onto the tray so story on the meatballs um you definitely want to you can make them as big or as small as you want because you're making them so if you want to get out your ice cream scoop and make <laughs> make the great big giant ones then you can go ahead and do that um, these one inch ones seem to work really well for me i really like these they're a great size for the crock pot and for Christmas, like I said, I put a little bit of grape jelly in the crock pot, along with some ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce, little water, throw these meatballs in there, let them simmer for a few hours. Oh my gosh, they're so delish. And I don't really have a major recipe for it, guys. I don't measure much. When it comes to cooking, I don't measure a whole lot. And that's what my cookbook is, uh, has been really good for. It's made me measure. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but it's definitely made me think, that's for sure. So don't forget, any of you that want my cookbook, it's ready to roll. Dspantrycooking.com, you wanna log in there and go ahead and browse around. We've got lots of mixes, pancake mix, waffle mix, um, chocolate chip cookie, kitchen sink cookie, that has everything in it, that's great. English muffin bread, all kinds of stuff. You definitely wanna check that out. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna keep scooping these. Don't forget I got six pounds, so I'll be scooping for a while, all right? So they're gonna go into a 350 degree oven and they're gonna cook for about 30 minutes. You'll be able to tell they'll be nice and browned on the outside and they'll be nice and juicy on the inside and they'll be just perfect. So about 30 minutes, 350 degree oven. Check them at 25. Sometimes you have to go a little bit longer if they're a little thicker. So I'm gonna keep scooping, and when we come back, you're gonna see the end result. It's gonna be so delicious, so don't go away. All right, everybody, we're back. Thanks for hanging out with me here. And these have been in the oven for just about 30 minutes, and they are perfect. Now, hint for all of you guys out there, this is perfect meatloaf. 
You would instead of making meatballs with them, just throw them in a loaf pan and bake it off. Now you're gonna bake it for a little bit longer, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, but same ratio of stuff, same ingredients. Just throw it into a loaf pan, and it makes delicious meatloaf. Delicious. All right, so I'm gonna dive into one of these. I want you to be able to see the finished product here. And these are just, they're piping hot. So I'm not gonna take a big bite into them, but I want you to see them. They're just perfect. You can see the little breadcrumbs and everything in it. I hope you like this recipe. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's just gonna be a fabulous evening and a fabulous day tomorrow. So don't forget, whatever you do, you make it with the love. We'll see you next time.